I don't normally share cl the clinical material, but this is something, a masked example. I got permission to use this, and this person is now dead, but it, it, it might be an interesting story to talk about. Um, I get in stages in my work where I get groupings of people with the same kind of issues or the same conditions, and a couple of times in my practice, I've had an uh, unusually high number of people that were dying, just the way it happened. Uh, and they were often referred by the physicians to get ready for death. And so they kind of went into analysis at the end of life. And this is a woman that had advanced brittle diabetes. Um, um, you could, I, when you were in the room with her, you could smell the death. Uh, she was losing her body one appendage at a time and one organ at a time. And clearly the physician had referred her because she, she was in total denial that she was dying. Couldn't even begin having a conversation about that. Met with her for about nine months, and she, uh, she was quite depressed. Would had quite a thing to get her into a wheelchair, get into the room. Um, and she was palpably different one time. There was something more buoyant about her. And I said, it feels like something shifted. She said, well, I had a dream. You sometimes ask me about dreams, and I don't dream. I had a dream. She says, I dreamed that um, I was a big... Uh, ferry boat was waiting for me on Hood Canal. And um, I went to go take the foot, and it was leaving at 4 o'clock, and it was an all-night journey to the other side of Hood Canal. So geography's obviously changed, but this was an all... And she's a fancy, one of these Alaskan cruise ship-sized boats. She got on board, and the first mate said, oh, the captain would like to see you. So she went up to the captain. And the captain was there, and she's a Southern Baptist woman, and you may know in those traditions you don't drink, but the Southern cap, uh, the captain was making her favorite secret drink that she didn't tell anybody about, which is a double daiquiri. And he served her up a double daiquiri and laid it on the table. <laughs> Said, well, you've arrived a little bit early. Uh, you can go back home. There's, you have one bag left to pack with your husband and each of your children. When you finish packing the bag, you can come back and it's going to be a great trip. I know you're a little nervous about it, but this is a great cruise ship. We've got three floors of dancing. We've got ballroom, country, and western, and we've got the tango, and you look like a tango woman, so I think you're really going to like this trip. And that was the end of the dream. And she asked me what I thought about the dream, and I said, well, it sounds like you're going to go pack a bag with each of your family members. I don't know what it is. And she started to cry, and she says, yeah, I know, nobody else knows, because I'm dying. Yeah, she had known. And she went and finished a process with each of those three family members and died when she'd finished the last conversation, which was, was with her husband. Um, I think that dream and that experience answers a lot of questions about what happens after death. I don't know how it answers it, but it certainly felt complete and whole to me. Um, and it answers questions about what real healing and cure are. Uh, so I just share that story. It's a very interesting story, and it's a real experience. And somebody had that. And I think she was dreamed by our other realms. I think she was in that liminal realm, and she had access to really important information, and she acted on it, and a consci consciousness grew in her, and grew in me, grew in the room. Um, and I think that's the task we're about. It's that place.